All right, Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Yatazadak here of Israel. I'd like to start off by giving all and glory to Yahweh, Pashim Yahweh Shai, Pashim Kakwadash, giving double honors to the elders and apostles, Great Millstone. Now, uh, this lesson, um, Salakia, yeah, this lesson that I'm going to touch on is concerning the uh, uh, reincarnation, right, which is spoken of in the Holy Bible, right? We're going to discuss the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right, and, um, and also uh, diverse doctrines, right? So, Lord willing, you're edified, and um, again, giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Kakudash, double honors to those and apostles of Great Millstone. Uh, so, let's get right into it. This is uh book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and uh, verse 23. Wait, Jeremiah 29 and 23. Let's get that real quick. And of course, we're going to go into some Hebrew, right? Scriptures speak about, right, uh, uh, to use uh, due diligence in this thing, right? And to grow, right, steadfast in the uh, in this in this uh, understanding, right. Jeremiah twenty nine and twenty three, uh, because they have committed villainy in Israel, and have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives, and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them, even I know. And they may witness, saith Yahweh, Bashim El Shai. Right? Because the Most High God is beholding the works of men, right? In this world, right? You have the works of the artificer, right? Like it says in the book of Sirach, right? You have the artificer that is occupied in this cunning work, right? You have, uh, uh, in the Hebrew, what's, what's called, uh, Rekwam. Right, which is a needle worker, an embroider. Right, you also have the uh, 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 the craftsman, right, uh, or or what you would call today uh, the modern day designer, right, uh, which is uh, in the Hebrew it's chashab, right. Uh, chashab goes into the word uh, meaning to reckon, right. Um, but if you go Right, actually, let's get that real quick. All right, and um, right, so embroider someone who ornaments with needlework, types of embroideress, a woman in a woman embroiderer, right? Then you have what's called the uh, the artificer, right. Let's get that real quick. All right. And you have the craftsman. All right. Embroider to adorn with colors to vary, variegate. All right. Which is a, a weaver. All right. Needle worker. Embroider. All right. That's that's what that means. All right. So you have. Uh, let's go to artificer. Right, harash, which also means to be silent, right? Because artificer, right, he's focusing on his work, right? Because he doesn't have time to chat while he's uh, uh, grinding uh, the metal or smelting, whatever the case may be, right? So he silently works on his craft, right? Um, Right. Um, let's get that real quick. To reckon. Right, the craftsman. Right. 
right? You have the craftsman, right? He de he designs, right, the thing to be constructed, right? Or you have a what's called a modern day designer, right? Puts the pieces whether you're working on, right, a work of art or a a, a art piece. You're working on uh on a design, whether it be for a a a piece of clothing or a, a a room a house right you are the craftsman right which is uh salakia right to think to meditate a shop to reckon right to do a count right imagine invent right um right which is a craftsman right then you have, like I brought it before, uh, in the book of Genesis, right, you have a, uh, let's get that real quick, what you would call a blacksmith, right, but it's, it's actually, uh, let's get that real quick. Genesis Actually, let's just uh, go to the scriptures, right? Genesis, what is it, 5? Genesis 4 and 22, right? I knew it was there. Right, so like I was saying, right, you read in the book of Sirach, it speaks about, right, these men are what construct the, the, the structures of the earth, right, the buildings, right, which is uh, what Esau, right, this is part of his, his gift, right, uh, artificing. Right, he was the first, uh, what do you call it, uh, landlord, artificer, right, a uh, smelter, right, which we go into the Hebrew for uh, to smelt. Uh, it's yeah, uh, tazak, right, to cast, right, which is by interpretation to sprinkle. Or you could cast right in in uh, in uh, an image, right, an idol, or casting a a shovel, right, an instrument to use, right, for example, right. But Genesis four and twenty two, right. Um, which is uh, let's get this. Latash, right, which is a, uh, what you would call a blacksmith, right, but it's a forger, right, forger of iron, right, 
which is part of Esau's gift, right? Genesis 4 and 22, Watazalah Gam Hawa, right? And Zilla, even she, right? Which is a, uh, um, a lot of people get it misconstrued that Hawa means, mean, means he, and Haya means she, right? In the Hebrew, but here it's a, it's a, uh, it's Hawa, right? So that means she as well, right? So Zilla brought forth the Alada, right? Atha, the ball, Quayan, Latash, right? She brought forth to Tibal Cain, right? A forger, right? Latash, Kalharash, right? Of all artifish, artificers, and brass, Nachash, Nachashath, right, and iron, right, Wabarzal, right, Wahwath, right, and the sister of Tubal Cain, the Balkwayan was Naima, right, so Nachash means brass, but also you read about that in the book of Genesis that, uh, um, that, um, uh, let's get that real quick, actually. I don't want to mess up the, the precept. Basically, it speaks about how, uh, Laban, right? Because Nakash means to divine, right? Which, you know, these, uh, these Shemites that were dwelling in uh, Babylonia, right, Aram, right, which is all part of Mesopotamia, right, which you would call the Fertile Crescent, which you would call modern day uh, Iran, Afghanistan, and so on and so forth. Th that region, right, uh, the lands of Elam, right, which are Elamites, right, which are Shemites as well. Uh, so Laban, right, in the text it says he observed that, that, uh, um, that he, he was blessed because he had, uh, Jacob, right, uh, in his midst, right, caring for his flocks, right, so, so the, the, uh, he observed an omen, Right, which is a, which is like what you would call, right, observing time, right, observing right superstitions, right, which was a true superstition, right, but it's in the law it says not to observe these things, right. For example, you see a right three three three, six six six, or right, and then you think, oh, you know, something's gonna, something bad is gonna happen. That's not what it's talking about. Right, that's just the, the imagination of the human mind, right? Right. Observing a superstition, right? So the law says not to uh, look for signs or omens, right? To be superstitious, right? Which brings in other ungodly uh, uh, thoughts. Uh, so let's get that in Genesis. 20 right um, Genesis 30 and 27 and he said and Laban said unto him I pray thee if I have found favor in thy eyes tarry for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake right which he was observing an omen Nachash, right, it means to divine. For example, you have so called tarot card readers, people who read stars, right? This is what these people did. They were worshiping the host of heavens, they were idol worshippers, right? They were caught up in all types of superstition, right? Which recently I'm going to touch on that, 
when I when I uh, go out to camp, you know, Lord willing, right? If it be of the Lord's mercies, right, that that I can um, present uh, my cause, right? But again, uh, that's that's what that means, right? In a hush, right? But let's let's go into the Hebrew, right? And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake, right? Um, so it says, Why Amar Aliyawa Laban Amana? Right, and he said to him, Laban, right, if now, right, Matazataya Han Paiyanyaka, right, if I have found favor, Han, uh, in your eyes, right. Nachashataya, right? I have observed, right? Um, Waya Barakanaya, right? And he was blessed me, Yahweh, upon your turnings, upon your turn, right? Upon your goings, right? Bagalaka, right? Right. And it says, uh, divination, divine, observe signs, right? To observe, observe an omen, right? Divine, learn by omens, right? Which is not permitted in the law, right? Things like seeking familiar spirits, right? Um, seeking sounds, and then they may, right? You may, your mind may interpret them as something else, right? Or things like uh, observing patterns, right? Even the patterns that you see, for example, you may see a, a you may splatter some paint on the wall, and, right, you, you're trying to hard, you're trying to look hard to see what it might look like, or it might look to you as something else. But really, it's just paint on the wall, right? So these things are not permitted in the law, right? Because they, right? These are ways to trick your mind into believing or thinking you're either seeing something different or, right? Which is why, right, Paul the Apostle, he spoke about, right? Uh, right, not to follow your temple, right? Which is why... Right in the book of Genesis speaks about right the herbs of the field are for meat, right? They're not to be right things like smoking cigars, right? You're not supposed to smoke cigars or cigarettes. Right? Because the plants they were made to be to be that way. They were Salaki, the herbs of the field were used um for medicine or for food. Right? You're not supposed to write, you know, right? Use hallucinogen, hallucinogen, hallucinogens, right? Because the, the the purpose of the herbs is for medicine. It is not right, uh, for right, um, recreational use, right? Which is why you have right certain. Right, uh, oils that are used, right, to cure things like, uh, um, tremors or whatever the case may be, right, or, uh, right, but they're, they're supposed to be used for, supposed to be used for medicine, not recreational use, right, that's the point, right, um, right, so the hush, practice right to observe an omen right you also have right I think that's it for that actually right so you have right uh, let's go back to Genesis chapter 4 
right? So you have Tobal Cain, right? He was an artificer in brass and iron, right? Uh, which is a forger, right? Latash, right? And also, let's go into a uh, cast, right? And then we'll go back to the precepts, right? You know, just uh, for those studying the, the Hebrew, right? Right, because you have all types of things in the scriptures, right? But you have to go into the Greek, you have to go into the Hebrew. Right? You have math in the scriptures, you have right right architecture in the scriptures, right? You have history in the scriptures, right, and all kinds of things, right? Uh tazak, right, to pour, to cast, right? Um to pour out, right? Or like in the law, it says to uh, cast right incense upon certain uh, uh, baked uh, cakes, right? Which you would present unto the priest, right? Which is you can interpret it as a sprinkling, right? Or you could cast a molten image, right? an example on it but we'll just get back to the precepts right molten or melt I think the uh, should have looked up melt right molten image masak Right, which is a cast metal, right? Molten metal image, right? Fusion of metal, right? Nasak, meaning like a poured a libation, right? Or a pouring, right? So Masak would be like a molten image, right? Because it is Ma, meaning of. Sock mean to pour, right? Of pouring, right? So you're, you're making a uh, molten image, right? You can also make instruments of from these, from mixing various metals and, and smelting them, right? Which is why your tazak, that's what, mean, that's what it means to, to either sprinkle or to smelt, right? Because you're smelting something into a... Uh, into a form, pre-prepared form, right? So this is what, right, the Orientals did, right? They cast forms in the sand, right? Let's see if we can look that up real quick. Uh, casting metal and sand. So you can um, cast right metals and uh, forms in sand, right? See, got it right here, right? Now you can look that up yourself on how exactly it's done, but uh, right here's a little chart, right? See, <laughs> but um, right, but the point is, right, um, Jeremiah twenty nine twenty three. Right, 
Some people have committed what vill villainy, adultery, right? Now this is talking about when the Israelites were, were in the Holy Land, but our people are doing that today, right? Speaking lying words in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yehoshai, right? You got camps like ISUPK, Sakari, um, IUIC, right? They're not telling you, thus saith the volume of the book. Right, and I tell, then I warn you about things that are coming to pass, right, in these latter days. Right, so they're speaking things that the Lord had not commanded them. Right, and the Lord God is seeing this with His very eyes. Why? Because He beholds His eyes upon the works of men. Right, and that precept. In the book of Sirach, right? Let me just get that real quick for you. Right. Because this is why the Lord God sp spoke unto his servants, right? To declare his works, right? The Lord God made what the artificer he made, right? Uh, the merchant, right? These are men that, 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 right? continue the works of their fathers, right? We are continuing the works of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and the things spoken unto us, which are the Israelites, right? Which is prophecy, right? The scriptures, right? Um, that's, that's our job, right? See, everyone has a work in this life, right? Uh, Syrac 45 and 1 and he brought out of him a merciful man who found favor in the sight of all flesh, even Moses, beloved of God and men, whose memorial is blessed. He made him like the glorious saints. He magnified him so that his enemies stood and feared him. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease, and he made him glorious in the sight of kings. He gave him a commandment for his people and shewed him part of his glory. Right? So the Lord God communed with Moses face to face. Right? Not in the dream, right? Not in similitudes, right? But he spoke unto him, right? As one of his fellows, right? He sanctified him in his faithfulness and meekness and chose him out of all men. He made him hear his voice and he brought him into the dark cloud and gave him commandments before his face, even the law of life and knowledge that he might teach Jacob his covenants and Israel his judgments, right? This is why... Right, this lesson is going to focus on what reincarnation, right? Because these men are back today, right? We don't know who they are, but they're 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 prophesying, right? Right? Why? Because the scriptures speak about the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets, right? So this that's what this lesson is about: reincarnation, which is in the Holy Bible, and also about the the uh, chariots, right? Because when you read about the accounts, right? Uh, when Lord God showed his glory to the Israelites, right? He's, he asked Moses, right, to bring the elders of, of Israel, right, wise men, to worship afar off, right? Her and, and Aaron, right? But Moses is who he caused to ascend up into the cloud, right, to be there 40 days and 40 nights. Now, when you think about that, right, for those who watch Dragon Ball Z, you, you think about something like the hyperbolic time chamber, right, which where uh, Goku and the various Saiyans, right, they were training, right, a day, right, was, was like uh, uh, sped up, right, inside that chamber, but... And that in, in the outside, right, time stood regularly, right? So Moses, right, 
supposedly he was in there 40 days and 40 nights, right? But, right, now we, we prophesy in part, we, we, we know in part, we prophesy in part. So one can only speculate that when Moses was up there, right, he was showing many things, right? So the time, right, was, was moving differently when he, when he, right, ascended up into the dark cloud, right, which is the mothership, right? Which is what he could have easily either, right, been transported, right, somewhere else or, or you just don't know. Right, you can't limit the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Right, he could have he could have brought like like a uh, party apostle. Right, he ascended into paradise. He thought he was dead, but he he ascended into paradise. Or the prophet Isaiah. Right, the prophet Isaiah. Right, um. Right, he saw things. Right, he saw things like the cherubims and. and and the uh, the flying the, uh, the flying serpent, which put a coal in his mouth and purged all his sins, right? So he was in the spiritual world, right? He was transported to the right to the fourth dimension, right? So you can only speculate what happened with Moses, but but that dark cloud was the chariot, right? So he was caught up. He was what you would call so-called abducted, right? Shown many things right so you have to distinguish when these things uh for example like like abraham right he was actually shown a vision of the night in his sleep right joseph right the husband of mary right the earthly father of yahweh shai right he was shown the angel appeared unto him in the, in the dream, right? But you had men like Moses, right? Uh, um, the account, and also the account of uh, Yahweh Shai, right? When he brought, what was it? Uh, uh, what was it? Peter, Peter and John. And um, let's get that real quick, actually. I think that's in the book of Luke. Right, so they have the chariots spoken about, right, throughout the whole book. Right, you just said I gotta have discernment. Right. Transfiguration, right, of uh, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, right? Even in the book of Acts, right? I was shy, right? He was caught up, right, by a chariot, right? And the uh, the angels, right? They said, uh, right, same way you saw him depart, it's the same way he'll return. Look, yeah, let's just 
stuff. Go up right here. Chapter 9 and 34. Right, Luke 9 34. Right. So it was Peter and uh let's get the beginning of the account. Right. Luke chapter 9 and 18. And it came and passed as he was alone praying. His disciples were with him, and he and he asked him, saying, Whom say the people say that I am? Who say the people that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah. Others say that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, Right, so reincarnation is, is in the Holy Bible, right? And you also have chariots in the Holy Bible. Right? He said unto them, By whom say ye that I am? Peter answered and said, The, the anointed of God. He straightly charged them, commanded them to tell no man this, that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, but and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be slain, and be raised the third day. Right? And, right, Christ, Jesus Christ, right, is not his name. Taman Shayak, Yahweh Shai. Right? Christ, right, goes back to uh, uh, Serapis Christus, right? One of the Edomite uh, inventions, right? A hedonistic uh, idol, right? Like scriptures say that the uh, gods of the heathens are idols, right? Let's look that up real quick, actually. Possible bar, right? He always brings that up, right? Uh, Serapis Christus, just like when you see, right, so called Virgin Mary with, with a baby Jesus in her hand that goes back to Madonna, right? That's not right. The Hebrews, right, were under a Roman captivity, right? So these accounts are written in the language. Of their captivity right so that's that was not the name right the, the, the Greek is not the language right that's just the language in which the accounts were written right Serapis latter later form Serapis earlier form Osiris Apis Serapis a Greco-Egyptian deity Right, so when the Egyptians, right, uh, so like it, when the Greeks conquered what the Egyptians, right, for example, Alexander the Great, that's where you get the word at Alexandria, right, the city of Alexandria, which was in Egypt, right, which they assimilated the idols of the of the Egyptians of the Hamites, right, when they formed, right, their their right, their Greco-Egyptian deities. Right, which is why the scriptures speak about Esau heaping himself upon himself all people. Right, he's a culture thief. Right, he takes on the the ancient practices. Right, the ancient tactics of these ancient nations. Right, even for example the Assyrians. Right, if you look up look up the history of the Assyrians. Right, they uh, removed the borders of the people. Right, and that even goes back to Egypt. Right. Uh, when there was a famine in Egypt, right? Joseph calls certain of the Egyptians to be removed into certain parts of Egypt, right? Move them around, right? Which is what, what Esau does today, right? He has what certain uh, um, cities, right? Where he puts certain jakes, right? Certain low-income areas, right? Then you have the areas of the... Of the uh, 
of the Hebrew Edomites, right? Because they're Hebrews as well, but they're Edomites, right? Uh, right. And then you have right these heathens, right? Like uh, Chinatown, right? You have some of these Moabites, right? They, they, right? They, they, they make their own areas, right? But the point is, right, that uh, this was created by uh, this cult was was pushed forward by Edomite Ptolemy, one Soter, right, of the Ptole Pto Ptolemaic Kingdom, right, as a means to unify the Greeks and the Egyptians, right, which is what Esau does, right, with these uh, paganistic practices, Christmas, Thanksgiving, right, it's a, it's a means of, like, enticing the people, right, this melting pot, right, which is called America Babylon Great, right, to, to unify, right, you have certain doctrines pushed, right, you have certain, right, religion pushed, Christianity, Catholicism, all these things, right, as a means, right, of unifying the people, right, which is the Tower of Babel all over again, which is vanity, right, all these things, right, uh, are the plans of the elites, right, right, and, and the Edomites, Right, they sell out their own people. They don't. They don't give a damn. Right, because the book of Iraq speaks about a man that has gone to war, suffers poverty. Right, so Esau doesn't give a damn about his own. Right, sells out his own people. Right, um, in order to forward uh, his matters. Right, his uh, counsels. Right, so this is what Ptolemy one did. Right, you can see it looks like a so-called right Jesus Christ image. Right. Um, Serapis, right? So it doesn't say Christus here, but right. Um, let's see, if we can look that up. Serapis, Christus, King Jesus Christ. So you see Serapis Christus, hybrid name of Osiris and Napis, right? Um, Jesus, Serapis Christus Horus, right? He has that thing on his head, right? Just like in the uh, Egyptian inscriptions, right? They have a so-called like a globe or something, right? Um, Right, so all these things, right, these, they're, they're heathenistic, they have heathenistic origins, right, you can look that up yourself, um, Madonna image, uh, origin, right, this goes back to the uh, Renaissance, right? Um, Madonna and Child Origin, right? I may be going into another topic, but we're going to show you these things originate in Rome, right, which, which is it all goes, all, all roads go back, right, to Rome, right, Roman Catholic worship, right, Christianity, right, which is during the Renaissance, right, 15th century, right, when Esau came back into power, like it says in Revelation chapter 20, right, he was subjugated, but for a certain time, then he was loosed again to deceive the nations. He does that by what? 
by changing the images of the saints, right, which are the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites, right, according uh, to the Holy Bible, right, so you can look that up yourself, but, uh, um, right, so the scriptures, right, they say what they say, right, and, right, like Amashi Yahusha said, right, you can't, the scriptures cannot be broken, right, so this word is perfect, right? Why? Because it is the truth, right? And it, and it is the truth, right? Because you see it coincides with history, right? It coincides with archaeology, right? The things that are coming to pass in these latter days. The power of spirit, Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Kakudash, right? So it says, um, Luke 9 and 21, and he straightly charged them, and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected of the others, and chief priests and scribes, and be slain, and be raised the third day. Right? Talking about uh, Hamashiach Yahushai. Right? Like the elders recently brought out. Right? Elders, apostles. Right? At camp recently, right? Right? Uh, the Passover was, right? Which Hamashiach Yahushai, right? He's our Passover, right? Right? He was sacrificed on the 14th day, right? The new moon, not, I mean, Salaki, the full moon, not the new moon, because it was on the 14th day, which was a high holy day, which was the 14th day of the month, right? You have, I recently saw online, right? You have a certain, certain individuals, right? They only celebrate the Sabbath once a month or on the seventh day of the month, right? They know the new moon is 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 uh when the moon is is covered completely right um but they don't understand that it's every seven days the new moon is a sabbath as well right you read about that in first seven chapter 20 right so if you don't know right if you don't read the scriptures right you're gonna go off right and recently, when I saw that same person saying that they only celebrate Sabbath on the seventh day, right? They brought out the scripture where Paul said, right? Let no man judge you uh, by holy day, meat and drink. That, yeah, that's true. But the law says, right, to not suffer sin upon your people, right? So we're still going to call that, call out these, these, right? These false understandings, right? These people going off. Right, not saying, right, IUIC saying the full moon is a new moon, right? When the scriptures clearly say that the, uh, the book of Sirach, her light decreaseth in her perfection, right? Which is where you have the, uh, the uh, crescent, right? Which is, uh, um, what is it? Um, let's see if we can look up signs of the... Sabbath Crescent
<laughs> right, so, uh, let's see if I can find something here. Right, so when you see the uh, the moon, right, which is right the sign of the of the Sabbath, the sign of the new moon, which is a crescent, right. You see, you know, there's one day left, right, until the new moon, right. For example, let's go to the um, right uh, moon phases, right. Tonight is the new moon, right. But as you can see, there's a slight crescent. Now, if I were to look this up the day before, you would see clearly a crescent, right? This is, these are the signs of the Sabbath, right? Uh, approaching, right? Which is a sign of the crescent, which is why these, uh, right, uh, the Freemasons, right, the Muslims, they use, they, they, they have these signs of these crescents, right? Not because they follow, right? Uh, like the scriptures say, right, because I can't speak on that, which is why I looked it up, but the scriptures tell you clearly, right, not like IUIC says, right, oh, you go to the, whatever country you're in, and then you look up the calendar, which is a Gregorian calendar, which is man-made, and then you see what day the Sabbath falls on, Friday, Saturday, that's not what it's talking about, right, but anyways, um, right, so Yahweh Shai, right, he was sacrificed as a living sacrifice on the 14th day, which is the, uh, uh, which is a Sabbath, right? You have the Sabbath on the first day, which is a new moon. You have the seventh day, you have the 14th day, right? You have the 21st day, right? And then you're going to have a new moon coming up again, right? So it's not the next seventh day after that. It's when the new moon hits, right? But anyway, um, Luke 9 and 23. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let, them, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Right? Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Right? For what is a man advantage um, if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. Right? But I tell you of the truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Shai. Right, but here's a point. And it came to pass about in eight in eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, now I'm not sure why it says about eight days after, right? I'm gonna have to look into that. And do a screenshot, right? So I can study that. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, right? So there was a transfiguration. And his raiment was white and glistering. Behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, which appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy in sleep. When they were, when they were awake, they saw his glory. And the two men that stood with him, and it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Yahushai, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make unto thee, make make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. Right? Moses symbolizes the law, right? Elias symbolizes the prophets, right? Revelation 11, right, speaks about the two prophets, right? Which is the law and the prophets, the northern and southern kingdom right um not knowing what he said 
While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. Right? Right, so you had what? This was not a vision, right? This was a chariot, right? Moses, Elias, right? Right, they were, right? They appeared, right? They entered into the cloud, right? Which was a chariot, right? They departed, right? Just like Yahweh Shai Mashiach, he departed out of a cloud, a chariot, right? And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him, right? When the voice was passed, Yahweh Shai was found alone and he kept it close and told no man in those days any of the th those things which they had seen, right? So there you go. You have reincarnation in the Holy Bible, right? You have the accounts of the chariots, right? Which is what part of this lesson is about. Now I'm going to bring up another precept, right, in the book of Exodus, right, when Moses ascended up into the mount, right, for 40 days and 40 nights, right, because he ascended up, right, into the, into the, uh, to the abode of the Most High, right, to speak with him face to face, right, which is, uh, Exodus chapter 24, right, let's get that in the book of Exodus chapter 24, This is the book of Exodus 24. And uh, let's get that. Exodus 24 and 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, right, which are two of the Aaron's son, his sons, and seventy of the elders of Israel. And worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near unto the Lord, but they shall not come thy. Nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord God has said, we will do. Right? Um, so let's get to the point. Which is, uh, actually, let's read, uh, let's just keep reading Exodus 24 and 4. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning. And built it an altar under the hill and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto the Lord. Right, so before the Levitical priesthood was, right, you had the men of Israel offering up burnt offerings, right? So it was never about just uh, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Levi perpetually, right? You, you were going to have in this due time. Right, when Hamashiach Yahushua came on the scene, right, you had had the priesthood, like the law said, right, because the law was a pattern, was a shadow of things to come, right, a nation of kings and priests, which is why, right, Peter, right, the head of the church, right, which of those that can receive it was King, is King David, right, um, and is uh, uh, Moses as well, right. In the uh, regeneration, right? He spoke. He spoke about a royal priesthood, right? A nation of kings and priests, right? You read about that in the Book of Revelations as well, right? So it says, right? And this this precept you can prove, right? That before there was Levites, there was, right? The men of Israel offering up burnt offerings, right? Exodus 24 and 6, and Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar, and he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people, and they said, all that the Lord has said we will do and be obedient, all right, so let's get that in the blue letter, blue letter, Bible, 
Exodus 24. Actually, I could have just typed that. Right, so Exodus 24. So like it. We're gonna get a. Uh, Exodus 24 and 6 And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins And after the blood he sprinkled on the altar Right Right The Hebrew is Wayakwa Masha Hataziah Hadam Right And he took Moses half of the blood Wayasham uh, Ba'agana Wahataziah Ha'adam Zarak Right And he placed in uh, basins, right, which is a gun, right, which is, uh, by interpretation, it's like a, uh, a a sink basin, right, or a hand basin, where you had the basin where you fed, right, uh, provender onto the cattle, right, which is like a, uh, a cylinder, right, where I believe it was Rachel, uh she placed right uh was it rebecca let's get that real quick actually i believe it was rebecca yeah rebecca uh ray when a servant of uh abraham ray eliezer of damascus Right, he met with Rebecca. She put it in watering basins, right, to water, right, uh, um, um, let's get that real quick, actually. I want to mangle it, the, uh, what the preset says, to feed the camels, right, it was, uh, which is, uh, let's get the Hebrew for that. Of the servant of Abraham. Genesis 24, let's get that real quick, I'm just going to get it in another window, right, Genesis 24, and that's spiritual because I was just on Exodus 24, and now I'm on Genesis 24, not that I'm, uh, observing an omen right there's a difference right comparing spiritual things by spiritual things right this is talking about things spiritually in the scriptures right not right looking at a lamb and then you're gonna you're gonna lay lay up lamb right and you're saying right well because I looked at the lamb, I was supposed to lay up the lamb and cook the lamb that you had, right? You know, that's just folly, right? That's just you, right? Your mind playing tricks on you, right? Which is what these other nations do, right? Right, talk about, oh, you know, there's a something. Oh, you hear that? It's so at your door, right? That's just... It doesn't exist, right? You know, they're just, they got poop in their brain, you know? But anyways, right, that's just, you know, uh, that boogie monster spirit, right? And we're not in that spirit, right? We're in the spirit of, uh, right, thus saith the Holy Bible, right? Um, you know, so our people are enticed by, right, the 
the mind, right? The mind can be, right? What does the scripture say? That the heart is deceitful above all things, right? Which is your mind, which is your imagination, right? Not like these other camps bring out, right? The heart being deceitful above all, above all things, right? Meaning your mind, you know, can, can, uh, you're not supposed to trust in your mind, right? If you have a good understanding, then yeah. But you're not supposed to be uh, deceived by vain things, right? Things of your imagination, right? You're supposed to uh, subdue the mind, right? Not let your mind, right, uh, uh, control you or subdue you, right? You're supposed to have, like Apostle Har said, right? You're supposed to uh, think logically, right? The law speaks about... Uh, um, just weights and balances, right? Right. So this is how you're supposed to operate in this in the uh, uh, mortal realm, right? With with right uh, balance, right? With a good understanding, right? With logic, not by emotion, right? The scriptures speak about what the kidneys being the seed of of emotion, right? Because they're on your side, right? And every whimper, every pain, every, right? That's just, right? That's the body, right? Uh, speaking into your mind, right? About the pains, right? Whether it be, right? Uh, uh, right? Uh, a pain, uh, perpetual or whatever the case may be, right? This is, this is, that's, that's, that's part, that's what communicates with your mind, which, which is, uh, right, where you, your emotions are, you construct the thoughts of your emotions, right, so you can either respond, right, in a certain way, or you could think logically, right, which is why you, you were given a brain for understanding, right, the cognitations of the Lord, like the book of Syrac says, right, so you so you're not supposed to right imagine uh well just because i feel this i feel that you know i must be sick or, you know because you can think yourself you can think sickness upon you right why because it's it all starts in the mind right so you're supposed to you uh move in a in a in a logical way right you're supposed to move with logic right that's the whole point um So Genesis chapter 24, let's get that, Genesis 24, right, um, is that, uh, 20, this is book, uh, this is book of Genesis chapter 24, and, uh, 20. And she hasted and emptied a pitcher into the trough, ran again into the well to draw water, and drew for her, and drew for all his camels. Right? Uh, what the Mahar, right? Meaning to haste, Mahar meaning to haste, right? Uh, Mahar it also means to espouse, right? Why? Because you have to have, you know, and the law speaks about when you have sexual relations with a woman, you're supposed to, uh, uh, espouse her to be your wife, right? You have to hasten her to be, right, uh, to uh, make a, uh, uh, damn, I recently looked that up, so I can let me get that real quick. Um, so like, yeah. You're supposed to consummate her to be your wife, Right, because the act of, of sex, according to the scriptures, is that's marriage. Right, uh, consummate. Um, make a marriage or relationship complete by having sexual intercourse. Right, so that completes the uh, act of marriage. Then you have what the dowry, right? Um, 
Let's get that real quick. Then we'll get back to the uh, scriptures. Alright. Let's hit that blue letter again. And, um. Let's look up dowry. So, dowry, which is, um. Right, Mahar also means uh, tomorrow, right? Um, no, that's not what I was looking for. Let me just look it up at the uh, lexicon. Here it is. Strong's, um, right, Mahar, right, a price paid for a wife to her parents. Uh, different from this is the use of the, of the Arab Mahar, uh, Mahar, a spouse will give promise to the future wife. In Latin dose, the gift given by the parents to their daughter who is about to be married. But let's look at the law. Right. <clears throat> now, what does the law say? Right. Exodus twenty-two and sixteen. Right. And if a man enticed, if a man enticed a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Right. Uh, which is Wakaya, uh, Yapatha. Right. And because, right, Kaya, uh, Yapatha, right, meaning to entice, right, if a man, right, and a woman can be enticeful as well, right, Patha, right, which is where you get Patha, meaning to be open, right, an open woman, right, a whore, right, meaning, right, she's, uh, right, she's flirting and, you know, she's doing the little, the little tiptoe, right, with the, with the little, right, she, you know, in the cartoons, they got the, they, they put the leg out and, you know, whoo, you know, all that, right, that's, that's, uh, uh, right, to, to, to make themselves seem enticing, right, it goes into the attitude that comes with it, right, to be open, right, Re literally, right, like, uh, the scriptures say, right, I believe that's the book of Syrac, uh, she openeth her quiver uh, to every uh, passerby, right? Let's get that real quick, actually. She openeth her quiver, and you know what that is. Wink, wink. <laughs> you know? Um, Sirach, Sirach 30... 26 and 12, she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when she hath found a fountain. A drink of a water near her. By every head she will sit down, and every, right, speaks about it, uh, and open her quiver against every arrow, you know? That's, uh, right, biblical, right, uh, uh way of saying, right, she wants the you know what everyone's you know what which is not good you know because you're gonna get you know what so uh, you know just a little have to throw a little salt in there you know you need to throw the salt in the wound and you know what happens it burns Right, so that's what patha is, right? To spread out, to open, right? Um, to be open in mind, to let oneself be persuaded, to deceive anyone, right? So a, uh, a whorish woman can deceive you, right? Cause you to lie, lie open, and, and then she will 
take your goods, which is uh, your jewels, right? Which is uh, uh, right? The uh, the the, uh, the life bearing seed, right? You gotta watch out for that woman, right? You gotta scripture speak about, right? Uh, not looking into every single way, right? In the city, right? Not to look on the nakedness of a woman, right? Which is her shame, right? And Eve, she's not ashamed of her shame, right? In the book of Job, it speaks about, I think that's, I believe that's 30 and 1, right? It speaks about, I will not look upon a maid, right? But not everyone is in that spirit, but oh well, right? To be simple, right? So you got a lot of simple eaves, you know? Persuasive, right? To persuade women. Women could be uh, persuasive as well. Right, to be simple, right? And I don't know where that where I read that, but that's what Pata means, right? To make oneself simple. Right? Women make themselves simple, right? In order to get you where they where they need to get you, right? Which is in your in your uh mashak, which is your privy area, right? The law speaks about, right? the privy area right so because he enticed a man a virgin Ayash uh, Ashar right which Arash uh, which is not um, betrothed right um right so betrothed right meaning um to erect right uh to build right a bed a couch with a canopy uh from the idea of a bad fellow a husband or wife a rush uh, to espouse a woman to make a spouse, right? Um, so who's a uh, Aras? Um, Right, so one, right, a maid that is uh, um, not betrothed, right, literally, right, one doesn't, that does not have a uh, bedfellow, right, and uh, what is it, uh, let's see, we can look that up real quick. A bed, a couch, right? A consort, right? Eras, Eras. Couch, Stephen, right? A bed, right? A bedstead. Right, so a woman that is uh, betrothed, right? Right, 
right? Um, so that's Irash, right? Literally means like a bed, couch with a canopy, right? A bedfellow, right? Which is where you get Arash, right? Which is a, uh, you could interpret it as a, as a, uh, as a, as a forming of the word Ayash and Irash, right? So if the woman does not have a, a rush, right? She does not have, she's not spouse, meaning she doesn't have a bedfellow, right? Ayash meaning a man, Irash meaning a bed. So it's a, uh, right? It's a conjunction of uh, Ayash and Irash, right? Which is a bedfellow, meaning she has a husband, right? Meaning she's already espoused, whether married or not, right? Um, to engage for matrimony, right? Whether she's promised or whether, right, she's actually, right, uh, living and laying with that man. And then, right, she lays with another man that's adultery, right? Wakaya Yapath, Ayash, Bathawala, Ashar, La'a, Arash, right? Washakab and Lies, uh, Ima, with, right, with her, because the Ha makes it feminine. Right, and lies with her. Uh, Mahar, meaning quickly, right? He will, right? He will, he will endow her to himself, to a wife, right? And that's where Mahar speaks about a dowry, right? And you're gonna, you're gonna read it right here. And the next verse, right? I'm my on, right? If he if refusing, he refuses. Ya ma'an Abaya, her father, right? To give, right, to him. Right? Silver, kasap, he will weigh a shakwal, right? Like the dowry, right? A virgins, right? So Mahar can mean, right, to hasten, and it could mean, right, a to dowry, right, which is why you got to read and know the law, right? Mahar, a price paid for a wife to her parents, right, different from this is used to the Arab Mahar, spousal gift, promise to a future wife, um, or Makar, right, Makar meaning to sell. Here you're not selling. Here you are uh, purchasing, right, price for a wife, right? You're paying the virgin's father, right? Because he refused, he refused to give her unto you. You still have to pay the dowry. Why? Because he had already plans to marry him off onto another man. But you enticed her, so you did not seek right the permission of the father beforehand right so you gotta pay right dowry right Mahar to buy especially wife for the price paid to the parents Mawar right which uh Mawar means to remove right uh, the car to sell, Mahar, right, to hasten, right, Salakia, um, Salakia, right, acquired by paying the purchase price, right, so that's where the word dowry comes from. It means to hasten, but it also means, right, 
a dowry. Why? Because, right, you want to marry a woman, which is a virgin, which belongs to her father. Right? So you want to hasten the marriage. What do you do? You offer a marriage gift or a price, right, which is called a dowry for hastening of what? The marriage, right? So let's go back to uh, the law. But her father can refuse her, right? You got to pay, right? Way up, Kamahar, like the dowry of the virgin, right? Because you're interfered into his business, right? Which is the woman is a business. Woman is a uh, is a garden to be planted, right? And you read about that in the Quran as well, right? Woman is compared unto a field to be sowed, right? It's a, that's all a woman is. It's a uh, a vessel, right? You know, she's a nurturer as well, which is why Lord God created an order, right? You have the nurturer, you have the head of the house, right? The Lord God formed all things, right? The good, the evil, light, darkness. Lord God formed what? Air, fire, water. All these things are, like scriptures say, double unto themselves, right? Um, not that we subscribe to the Quran here at Hero, Hero Israel, right? Because scriptures say that you cannot meet this book with another book. But look, right, you know, you can use references, but, right, we're not, we're not, right, that's not our specialty, right, so we're not going to speak on it. We're going to tell you, that say, the Holy Bible, right, tell you the prophecies, tell you, right, the words, right, the Lord God spake unto his people, Yasharala, right, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, right, the so-called Black, Hispanic, Native Americans, right, which is Holy Spirit, giving us the divine inspiration, right? To give our people what? The words of life, right? The fountain of living waters, right? So now, what does it say in Exodus 22 and 16? And because, Ashar, Arash, right? Because a man enticed a woman which is a virgin, which is not a spouse unto a husband. Right, and he lied with her, right? Washakab Ima, right? Mahar quickly, right? Right, he he will, right? Endow her, right, to himself, to a wife, right? Quickly, Mahar, Yamahar, Yamahar, Yamaharana, right? Lawa, La Asha, quickly. He will endow her to himself to do a wife for or for a wife. Right? Am Ma'an if refusing he refuses her father to give to him to give her to him, right? Uh Abaya Lathath Right uh Lawa because you don't have to always pronounce the ha. That's, that's just for you to distinguish when it's written in text, whether it is speaking of a woman or not, right? Lathath lawa kasap. Yashikwal kamahar ha bathawalath. Bathawalath. Ha bathawalath. Right? So if he refuses, if he refuses, he refuses her father to give to her, Right? Uh, to him, silver he were away like the dowry of virgins, right? But the wallet that, that's plural feminine, right? For virgins, right? So there you have it, right? Um, Right, so what did Rebecca do? Right, she hasted Mahar, right, um, 
and um and she emptied right um Genesis 24 and 20 and she hastened and she emptied her pitcher into the trail and ran again into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels right Watha Mahar right she hasted right Watha Ar right and she made naked or bare meaning she emptied her pitcher right which is ira right to be naked so nakedness is speaking of shame right or to empty out right require meaning something that is empty right to show up empty-handed so like you to the feast of the lord right or uh um uh when abraham right uh He divided his trained armed men, right, to do the rescue lot, right, from the five kings. What did he do? He uh, uh, portioned, right, his uh, troops, right, which, you use, which is in the scriptures, all speaks about the priest's portion, right? So you can uh, divide your troops, or you can, right, uh, um, here it is, halak, right, which is a portion, for example, portion to the priest, or you can portion the troops, meaning you divide them, right, into uh, a certain, right, uh, measures, right, um, Right, so she emptied, right, her bucket, right, which is a kad or kada feminine, right. Uh, Al shakwath use a point, right, to the basin, towards the basin, right, which is a tro, right. So you have like Moses, right. Put the blood in the basins, right? You have a tro, right? Which is a basin, right? Which because the servants of Abraham, his camels, they they drink out of that basin, right? Tro made of wood or stone, right? For use for cattle to drink at, which is a basin, right? Um, what the rat? With the rats, with the rataza, right? And she ran, uh, Iwad, right? Again, Al Habar, right? To the well, right? The well is also known as a uh, uh, Bawar, right? Depending on how you read it, which has that same, right? Pronunciation, right? It's the same vocalization. Bar, bawar, bawar. The wa serves as a ah as well sometimes, right? Uh, lashaab, right? Meaning to draw water, right? To draw water, and to draw water. Wata shaab, lakal gamalayawa, right? To all his camels. Right, I wouldn't compare that with Exodus chapter 24, which is um, Wayakoha Masha Hataziah. Right, he took Moses half the blood, Wayasham Bahaganath, Wahataziah Hadam Sarak. Right, and he placed it in hand basins. Right, because he was going to sprinkle that blood. He was going to put it in a tro, shakwa, because he didn't need that much blood. Right? We're talking about gallons and gallons of, of blood. Right? If it were put in a basin. He was talking about a hand basin. By interpretation, like a sink. Right? So you can call a sink an agan. Right? Because it's a water basin. Right? Whether it be made of wood. Whether it be made of metal, plastic, um, ceramic, 
very class. Um, right? Or whatever the case may be, right? A gun, a sink, right? By interpretation, or a water basin, or a hand basin, so like it. Right? You place in the pot, right? A basin, right? Or you can say and placed it upon a water basin, a hand basin, right? Or you can read it as he placed it upon a sink, right? You know they didn't have sinks in the wilderness, so we're gonna use, right, in this context, a water basin, and he placed it upon a water base, a hand basin, right? And he divided the blood, right? Or half of the blood, right? <clears throat> Because Hatazaya, right, it means to divide or half, right? So let's read it now with the proper understanding. Wayakwa Masha Hatazaya, right? And took Moses, right? Half the blood. Hadam, right? Wayasham Pa'aganath, right? And he placed, right? What the blood uh, uh, upon the, the hand basin, right? Wahatazaya and half of the blood ha dam right Zorak meaning to scatter right because you have uh right if you were to sprinkle it it would have been uh um waza right which is uh <laughs> So the Zorak meaning to scatter, Naza meaning to sprinkle, right? Yatazak, right, meaning to cast, right? For example, right, here's, here's a good example, right? Salt Bay, you know that guy that, that would, right, cast salt onto whatever he was cooking, right? He would kind of like, he wouldn't throw it, Shalak, that's what it means to throw, right? He would kind of like, do a light throw, which is to cast, right? Cast a little salt upon it, right? Sprinkle meaning, right? If you have a whole bunch of, you know, salt, you just sprinkling it on it, you know, and it takes more time. You're doing it slowly, slowly, slowly. That's naza. You sprinkle. If you're scattering salt or seeds, right? What are you doing? It's a rock, right? You're just scattering it, right? You're, you're, you're using the more hand motion and it's more, right? Uh, it's reaching uh, more of a radius than what your hand can actually reach. That's when you're scattering something, right? So that's the difference right there, right? So, um... Where are we at? Wayakwa Masha Hatazaya Hadam Wayasham Baganath Wahatazaya Hadam Zarak Al Mazabach. Right, so he, he what? He divided the blood, right, and he placed it upon a hand basin. And after the blood, he scattered upon the altar, right? And what do you do with the uh, uh, the other half? He sprinkled it on the people, right? There you have it. Right? Let's get back to... Uh, this word, right? Um, Jeremiah chapter 30 and uh, verse 2, right? The Paris video about Shem Yahushai, about Shem Kakodash, the water seals and fossils, great men's stone, right? Lord, when you're edified, right? 
Jeremiah 30 and 2, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in the book. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, saith the Lord, and I will cause them to return unto the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. These are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Right? So all the words that are in the book, right? Which is of, of the Lord's will, right? That he had, right? Uh, preserved the, the text, right? He made it so that the heathens would, what? Interpret it, right? Uh, superimpose their own understanding. But in the latter days, right? As the Israelites waking up, right? We have the true understanding, right? Through the Holy Spirit, right? We're giving you what? The prophecies, right? The vision is being, right? Spoken into clarity, through the the uh, uh, the prophets of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, being raised up in America Babylon the Great, right to declare the end uh, from the beginning, like the uh, Holy Bible says, right, which is the good news, right, which is the turning back of our captivity, right. But first, you have to have the day of trouble, right, which is coming near, right. Which is nearer than what we believed, right? Not only is our salvation nearer than we believed, right? The time of trouble, as such, never was since the since the creation, since the uh, foundation of the, of, uh, the, of the world, right? So time, as it, such, what what was not, right? So there's never been such a time as this, right? So you're gonna have many people, many losing their faith, right? Many of our people, right, are going to have a great falling away, like the scriptures say, right? You're going to have, so like, yeah, many of the Israelites, right, casting off the faith, right, the faith, the, uh, 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 the faith of the of their forefathers, right? And this happened what? During the time of Antiochus Epiphanes, right? During the time of the Greeks, right? Which they're not Greeks, they're Edomites. They took the uh, but they took the customs of the Polynesians, right? Which are the Japhets, Japhites, right? So called Hawaiians and so on and so forth, right? So you're gonna have su uh, such a time which which has not been. Right, a time of great trouble. Right, then you're gonna have the destruction. Then you're gonna have the elect delivered out. Right, and these things happen what before, right? Right, a a uh, uh, a simulating of the people. Right, a falling away. Right, during the time of the Antiochus Epiphanes. Right, and the scriptures speak about what once was will be done. There's nothing new under the sun. Right, Jeremiah 30 and 4. These are the words which that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Right? Like I'm sure you I wish I said, you're going to hear wars, rumors of wars. Right? Time of great tribulation. Right? Which we're in. Right? Then you're going to have, ultimately, the climax of Jacob's trouble. Right? Which is all hell breaking loose. Right? So-called white man coming down with great wrath. Right? Knowing that it's time is short. Right? You're going to have the heathen raging. Right? You're going to have... What two thirds of our people being in a reprobate spirit, right? Why? Because the Lord God, right, has put a great uh, uh, a delusion, right, has put them in a state of delusion, state of confusion, right? See their conscience with a hot, hot iron, right? And that's supposed to happen, right? So, none of these things should be dismaying, right? The remnant in these latter days, 
right? You see our people, right, caught up in the, the matters of this world, right? And we, we, right, as a remnant, the hopeful elect, and, right, we say that, right, humbly, right? That, uh, uh, right, our head is what? Our mind is, uh, is in this word, right? And for those that go out and teach, right, we're in this work, right? Thus saith the Holy Bible, right? And we're letting our people know, right, the judgments of the Lord, right, which will come in the form of what? The ICBM missiles, the great destruction, right, the Karagma, which is the Lord's Karagma as well, right? All these things will come to pass, right? Why? Because it's written, right? The Lord said so, right? In Jeremiah 36, ask ye now and see whether a man doth your with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? As a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness, right? That's talking about our people being dismayed, right? Do you see this as well? Why? Because the time of Jacob's trouble is the time of the trouble of, the, of these other nations as well. The time of Esau's trouble, right? Because Esau does give a damn. The upper echelons of the Edomite infrastructure, they don't give a damn about their own people. Right, they don't. They, right, they definitely don't give a damn about, about the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Right, so they're gonna have a, a terse, all face faces turn into paleness. Right, now we, it's 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 okay right now. Right, but we're gonna have famines being increased, inflation. Right, you're gonna have what uh, confusion in many places. Right, you right you already have you already have what uh, certain of these uh, productions. Being, 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 uh, uh, facilities, right, being destroyed, right, you, you have, you, you just have, right, the signs of, uh, of rebellion, of the spirit of rebellion, right, in America, Babylon, the Great, a spirit of, of, uh, of, uh, of dissimulation, a spirit of, uh, rep, of, of uh, reprobates, a spirit of, uh, right, like the Holy Bible says, that uh, they, they will seek to their diviners, them to have familiar spirits, right? All these things, right? We see all these things coming to pass, right? But that's going to be turned up, right? When these famines hit, right? When the wars hit, right? Right? When insurrections increase, right? If all faces turn into being turned into paleness, right? Let's look up that word dissimulation or dissension, right? Dissimulation definition. What does it say? It's concealments of one's thoughts, feelings, or character, pretense, dissembling, right? Synonyms Deceit, shamming, bluffing, faking, feigning, falsification, posturing, concealment, masking. Right, because all these things going on, it's just a uh, veiling of the things that are coming. Right? Uh, dissension. Disagreement that leads to discord. Right? Dispute, dissent, strife, discord. A lot of quarreling, there's a lot of falling out, there's a lot of disputation, right? Bickering, contention, argument, discord, right? Here's another one. Uh, never mind, that's a video game. <laughs> Dissidium. That's what I was looking for. Dissidium. Um. It says Latin. Dissidence. I guess that's where dissidence. Let's get dissidence. Um, 
protest against official policy dissent dissent disagreement right discord disapproval opposition resistance rebellion sedition right sitting apart Right, so there you have it. Right, a lot of dispute, a lot of discord being sown. Right, the scriptures speak about one that sowed discord, right, amongst brethren. Right, gotta watch out for them people. Right, we're not sowing discord. Right, we're telling you, right, that the prophecies, right, these things that are written will come to pass. Right, prepare yourself. Right, um, right, which is in the form of building up your faith, right? Watching as well as praying, right? Seeking the prophecies of the Holy, Bi Holy Bible, seeking the Most High God, why still being found? Calling upon His name, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, right? Bashim Kakwadash, right? Um, Jeremiah 30 and 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Let's talk about the remnant, right? For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Right? But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Right? Uh, this is book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 23. Right? So like I said, what once was will be done. There's nothing new under the sun. Right? We're going to link this up with uh, the book Isaiah chapter 19, right? Daniel 8 and 23, right? And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors come to a full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up, right? It's talking about who? Antiochus Epiphanes, right? Who persecuted the Jews, right? Attempted to uh, uh, gather all his people onto one, right? A so-called new world order, right? Which is in the form of what? Uh, the Rothschilds, right? The wicked elites, right? Which are the Edomites, the rulers of darkness of this world, right? Which is the what? The so-called Illuminati, right? The New World Order, right? Which is why Esau formed this so-called cult, right? Or this uh, 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 council of wickedness, right? In 1776. Why? Because he knew the people would, what? Ultimately rise up against the uh, the it, those those what that are profiting off the backs, the, the uh, blood, sweat, and tears, what? Of the common people. Right, so there had to be a way, right, to entice the masses, right, uh, uh, to subjugation, right, which is what the form of philosophy, right, philosophy is compared unto wine, right, because it entices, it entices you, right, to drink of it, right, to be drunken, right, to pollute the minds of the people, right, the what, uh, symbolism, right, whether it be uh, through, through your hands, right, through, through uh, uh, symbolism, right, trademarks right logos right propaganda right to entice the minds of the people right to make them think they have power but really right these are vain things right the uh, so-called religion all these things are vain right most high god is not dealing with religion most high god is dealing with his people right those that are uh, uh like scriptures say right there will come a time with it when when uh they worship the Lord God in spirit and in truth, right? The truth is what that the Lord God is gonna raise up His elect, throw down the Edomites, His rulership, right? Create the kingdom of heaven, which is for the sins of the Most High God. The Mashiach Yahweh was shy, right? Started with the with the hundred forty four thousand. They were speaking what the word the word of the the words of the end, right? The Lord God has raised up prophets here in America, Babylon, the Great, for that purpose. Right to throw down the so-called new world order, right? His so-called right gathering of the peoples, right? Daniel chapter eight and twenty-four, right? And this this man, right, Antiochus Epiphanes, is back here in these latter days, right? In the form of sleepy, creepy, right? Joe Biden, right? Right. This man is going to alter why? Because right, he's going to ultimately increase the unrighteous decrees. 
right? They're ultimately what? The saints, right? The so-called black Hispanic and Native Americans, which are the Israelites, right? We're going to be the number one enemy at the end of the day, right? Because why? Uh, we're telling you the 100% truth, right? We're re revealing the wicked, right? Which is part of the everlasting gospel, right? Which is what salvation unto the elect, destruction of two-thirds of our people, right? You other nations are not going to be saved. The Lord God is going to destroy you in the midst of World War Three, Armageddon, great destruction, right? Like the Holy Bible says, right? Those who fight against Jerusalem, right? Their eyes will consume away in their mouth, right? So none will be saved, right? The righteous will scarcely be saved. Scripture speak about we're going to escape by the skin of our teeth, right? And that's what the Holy Bible says, whether you like it, believe it or not, right? So this man is back today. The Holy Bible speaks about reincarnation, right? Daniel 8 and 24, and his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy it wonderfully and shall prosper. Practice and shall destroy the mighty, right? And the holy people, right? Because he... Right, the Lord God is raising up Esau as a harbinger of death at the end of the day. Right, these mighty nations, right, uh, the, the, the strongholds, right, through the so-called white man, he's going to he's gonna throw it down, right, the Lord God is going to throw down that goddamn devil, uh, the e Esau, right, like the dog that he is, and then he's going to throw down your heathens, right, through him, and then the, the, the Most High is going to, what, what? He's gonna, he's gonna uh, uh, raise up his people, right? So we've been trodden down. This happened before, right? So this man destroyed the mighty and the holy people, the saints, right? Because you did that in four man tears, his epiphanies, persecuting the Hebrews, right? The Israelites, right? So that, so that would be unlawful for one to be called a Jew, right? To keep Sabbaths, to keep high holy days, right? And there's gonna come time, right? Where we're not gonna be able to speak this word. Right? And then all hell is going to break loose. Right? So what once was, it will be done again. Right? Thus saith the Holy Bible. Right? So we believe this man is back in these latter days. Right? We're going to show you with the, with the following verse. It says, Daniel 8 and 25. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. He shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall destroy many. Right, because where you have pestilence, whether it's man made or not, it's all of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. He shall also stand up against the Prince of Princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Right, so ultimately, right, what the Edomites, they, they, through the space program, right, they're going to try to stand up against who? Uh, Hamashek Yahushai, right, the author of life, right, the first begotten son, the first begotten creation, right. Most High God is going to throw him down, right? Through Hamasha Yahushai, right? Uh, 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 in his second coming, right? Um, so yeah, this goddamn devil, right? He's going to, he's going to, he's thinking he, he, his counsels are vain, right? He's thinking vain things, right? His counsel is, is, is come to naught, right? Why? Because the Israelites are waking up, Right? And everyone knows who the wicked is now, right? So this is the book of Isaiah, um, chapter 19, and uh, start of verse 1. The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt. Now does that mean the Most High God Yahweh is going to ride in a cloud and, and come into the midst of Egypt? No. He said that's going to happen to Hamasha Yawusha, right? Returning as an angelic power, right? But actually, let me get this real quick. Before I went into the, uh, got into the Hebrew, I forgot to, uh, forgot to get the rest of Exodus chapter 24. Uh, so like, yeah. Exodus chapter 24. <clears throat> so like, yeah. Exodus 
Exodus 24 and uh, verse 9. Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, the 70 of the elders of Israel. Actually, that's not what I was looking for. Exodus 24 and 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord God has said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which Yahweh Shemiel Shai had made with you concerning all these words. Exodus 24 and 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. All right? The Hebrew te text says, Right? They saw to the God of Israel. Watachath, Rakalayawa, right? And under his feet. Right, Ka Maisha, like all the workings of a what brick, Labana, right? Like it says in the book of Genesis, what is that, chapter 9? About the uh, Tower of Babel, right? Um, So like that's Genesis chapter 11, right? He said, let us make brick, right? And that's Labana, right? Laban, right? Uh, it's a wonder, right? The appearance of the God of Israel was like a, uh, a workings of brick, of sapphire, right? Sapphire is like a bluish, purplish, right uh color right and um um and it says waka itazam right and uh and like of the self same right for example in the law you read about itazam yawam right that's talking about the self same day right um and like the self like the self same right um image of the heavens right to uh uh clear this right or for, for purity right to harm meaning right uh so like yeah clicked on one thing to be pure right or clear Right, as in the pureness of something, right? Now you have also uh, pure, which is um, Zak or Zaka. Right, but that's talking about something uh, like um, soul, morals, or of uh, something of oil, the clarity of oil. Right. To be pure, right? Uh, bright. To be right, pure, clean. Right, or Zaka, which is um, to be pure. Right, um, cleanse the purity of a thing, right? Something that's not diluted. Right, 
clear. All right. So tahar, right? That's meaning like uh, something clean, right? Clarity, right? But zak is, but zak or zaka is something like a uh, pure, like a uh, something that's not diluted, right? Of an actual substance, whether it be liquid, right, or a solid, right? It's it's pure as in it's not there's there's no there's nothing, um, it's not mixed with anything, right? Pure oil, pure incense, right? Because it's a like pure incense alone, right? Um, Tahar is what something that's purified, right? When it's clear, right? You speak clearly, right? You're speaking out of the heart, right? Unadulterated, right? Something that's cleansed, right? And the remnant were cleansed by this word, right? Tahar, clean, pure, right? Arabic is uh, Tahar. Uh, tar. Or uh, Tahawar. I think that's what that means. Um, Right, and it's also used as what? Let's look at the precepts, which will tell you cleanse, right? Something that's cleansed, right? Clear, as in cleared from defilement, right? Exodus 24 and 11. Um, upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw God and did eat and drink, right? Um, the text says, Wa'al Ataza Yalaya, Badaya Yasharala, La'a Shalach, Yadawa, Wa'yachazawa, Ataha Alahayim. Waya akal, waya shata, right? And to the nobles, right, of the sons of Israel, right? A tazal meaning something that's close by or next next to one, right? So they were close to close confidence of the sons of Israel, which were the uh, elders. Read about that in the uh, beginning of the chapter, right? The, uh, he did not send out his hand. Right, meaning the Lord God did not strike the, the the elders of Israel. Right? Why? Because they were commanded to go up, 
right? To see the glory of God, the, his, the vision of the Almighty, right? To eat and to drink, right? Which is Chaza. Chaza meaning to envision, right? So Lord God, right? Right? They 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 beheld the uh, vision of Yahweh of uh, Yahweh Shem Yahushai, right? To see, behold, to envision, right? And that's what Chaza means to envision, have a vision of. Right to the God, right to God, right, which here says Allahayim, right, which is God's plural. But you read about them in the book of Genesis, right? Yahweh of gods, right? Let's talk about the Lord of hosts, right? The one God, right. And they ate and they drank, right? Um, and he said, Yahweh, and the Lord said unto Moses, Come up unto me into the mount, be there, and I will give thee tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them, right? By Amar Yahweh, Al Masha, Elah, Eliah, Ha Hara, right? And he said, Yahweh to Moses, ascend to me, to the mount, right? So he was caught up into the mount, right? To that cloud, right? Like I read earlier, right? Wahaya Sham, right? And he was hither. He was hither, right? Um, Wa Athana, right? And I will give Laka unto thee. Atha lachath, right to the to the tablets, right. Lawach meaning a tablet or lacha, that's a tablet. Chath makes it plural. To the tablets of stone, ha'aban. Wahatha wara, right to the law, right. And the commandments, right to the commandments, which, kathab. Ashar Kathabia, um, Kathabataya, right, which I will write, right, um, Lahawaratham, right, which is Yarak, is the root, right, to direct them or to teach. Exodus 24 13. Right, so here's the point. Wa ila masha al hahar wa yakas ha idnan atha hahar. Right, so he ascended up. Right, he went up. Right. He didn't just walk up, he didn't just skip up to the mount. Right, he went up to the cloud, which is a chariot. Right, and the sight of the glory of God of the Lord was like to devour and fire on the top of the mountain, the eyes of the children of Israel. Right, and Moses went into the midst of the cloud. Right, like a, like I read in the book of Luke, and what did he do? He ascended. He ascended up. Right, he was there forty days and forty nights. There you go. Right, so it's, it's undeniable. Right? The Holy Bible speaks about reincarnation, the chariots of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Right? And he gave his testimony, right? These accounts to what? To his servants. Right? Which are declaring it freely in these latter days. Right? So let's go back to um, let's go to Isaiah chapter 19, right? So it doesn't have to say chariots. It doesn't have to say so-called Black, Hispanic, Native Americans. It doesn't have to say uh, uh, spiritual power, 
right? This, this, this is why you got to have discernment, right? Judging spiritual things by spiritual things, right? Not divining, not observing time, not uh, uh, putting on a covering, right? Like the law says, observing omens, none of that, right? This is talking about, right, having discernment, right? When you, when you hear about spiritual things, it's not talking about, right, this is where the people get caught up in all these lies, right? All these things that pollute the mind, right? Which is, uh, uh, you know, spiritual, all that spiritual mumbo jumbo, right? We're telling you, right, to use the sermon. And that's it. Get your, get, get your uh, understanding in order, right? This is the book of Isaiah. Uh, chapter 19 and uh, verse 1 the burden of Egypt behold the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt right so that's talking about Yahweh Mashiach riding upon a chariot the chariot the father ship right right along with the Alahayim the, the angels right and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence right so it doesn't have to happen right at that moment Right, the idols of Egypt are being moved as we speak. Right, Kevin Samuels, right? These celebrities are being judged, the rappers are being judged, the culture, right, that he saw set up is being judged, is being thrown down, right? All these lies are being thrown down, right? The Lord God is making visitation upon the idols of Egypt, right? As the Israelites wake it up or waking up, right? These other lies are being turned upside down, right? And, but this ultimately is going to happen when the Lord God, right, who's only got the Son, visit, visits what? That second Egypt, which is America, Babylon, the Great, right? And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Literally, it's going to melt. But you got to have, you, you're going to have a, right, a throwing down of the of the hearts of the people as well, right? Two thirds of our people, right? Are they they're they're right? They're they're consumed by the wicked right like the scriptures say in the book of proverbs right where the, the um righteous right the upright is more or is more excellent than his neighbor but the way of the wicked seduced him right so people are being right right their their, 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 their understanding is being melted right and uh right they're being destroyed because the lord god gave them into that strong delusion right but the remnant are going to be steadfast, right? They're not going to be moved, right? The 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 elect will not be deceived, right? And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom, right? So ultimately, you're going to have a, an insurrections, right? Like it says in the book of Ezra, right? One city, one will not be go be able to go into another city, right? Because you're gonna have what? Uh, you're gonna have checkpoints. You're gonna have right. You're gonna have all right. All hell break loose. You're gonna have right certain sections, right? You're not gonna be able to w go into, right? Or you you might you might get you might get attacked. Or you might get right. This is what's coming, right? Uh, uh, great, right, uh, division, right, and the Lord God is dividing the peoples, right, ultimately setting the, uh, uh, separate the sheep from the goat, right, the righteous from the wicked, right, because it's not about, right, black, brown, white, Chinese, right, it's about the spirit, Lord God is dealing with the spirit, right, so you believe in this thing, you either do or you don't. You're either of the elect or you're not. You're either an Israelite or you're not. But if you are, two thirds of our people, they're going to be caught up, right, in the uh, ways of wickedness. They're going to be seduced by the wicked. They're going to be destroyed, right, during these insurrections, during right now, right. But these things are going to escalate at the end of the day, right. And Lord God, right, He's going to watch over His people. Right, those that are uh, faithful to His word, right, 
Isaiah 19 and 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and will destroy the counsel thereof. They shall seek to the idols, to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, to the wizards. Right? So you can have these insurrections, right? You can have one house beating another, right? Lack of water, lack of bread, all hell breaking loose, right? But before that, you're going to have the spirit of Egypt failing, the councils failing, right? Seeking, the, they're going to seek unto the idols, to charmers, to the familiar spirits, to wizards, right? And these things are not, are not going to do, right? They're not, they will not prevail, right? They will not prevail against the elect, right? The counsel of the wicked, right? Who be brought to naught, right? Isaiah 19 and 4. The Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall be ruled over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, right? And who is that cruel lord? Sleepy, creepy Joe Biden, right? Daniel 8 and 23, which is Antiochus Epiphanes, right? In a past life, right? Starting with the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, right? They believe that, right? And we believe that as well, right? Because what did he say in one of those speeches, right? Um, um, he said, right? He was speaking to one of the judges. He said, right, during the uh, uh, Obama, I believe is during the time of the Obama presidency, right, where he, uh, um, where they had implemented that law, right, the Obamacare, right, which in it you had a, uh, a uh, medical care, well, not a medical care, it was like a, uh, right, they inserted some kind of a Karagma legis legislation, right? And sleepy, creepy Joe Biden, right? He said, what? You won't judge on this matter. Mark my words, right? So cruel Lord, right? Right, that's him, right? And this happened back then, right? And the fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. Why? Because you're going to have the unrighteous decrees increasing, right? You're going to have the spirit of Egypt failing, right? The water shall fail from the sea, like it says in verse 5, and the river shall be wasted and dried up, right? The water is failing, right? You see certain reservoirs, right? Being, right, either dried up or, or right, the, it, right there, right? Egypt is failing, right? Um, which is why, um... I'm not going to go into it, but, you know, even during the time of uh, uh, the, the ancient Roman Empire, right, you had their uh, their infrastructure, right, their their sewer systems, right, was, was collapsing. Not that I'm saying that's happening now, but like it says in Isaiah chapter 14, right, the worm is being spread under the, right, meaning this place is going to fail, right, uh, and every time. Right when the ancient Roman Empire was was uh, going down, you had a time of uh, damn, I forgot that word, but it was called um, um, slack it, uh, what was it, uh. Um 
may not get it right now, but um. Oh man. What was it? Let's see what I can find this right here. Circuses. See if I can get this from the, uh, Anyways, the point is you're going to have a lot of distraction. You're going to have a lot of distraction. You're going to have a lot of appeasement for simple things. A lot of gifts, right? Which is ultimately distractions. You're going to have a lot of distractions happening in these latter days. Right? Um, trying to find out what is the right term for this. Delirium. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to revisit these right here. But, um, Anyways, you get the point, right? You're gonna have a lot of distractions in these latter days, right? Before all hell breaks loose, right? 
in here. Anyways, you get you get the point. Um, Isaiah 19 and 6. They shall turn the rivers far away, and the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up. The reeds and flags shall wither. The paper reeds by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, and everything sown by the brooks shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. Right? So as you have, right, all hell that's going to break loose. You're going to have the waters, right, meaning right the the uh, inflation right is going to throw down right this man's system you're going to have ultimately the rivers wasted right the book of uh, revelation speaks about the waters being turned to wormwood right this creatures that see dying right um right like it says in um isaiah 19 and 7 right or eight, the fishers also shall mourn, all they that cast single into the brook shall lament, they shall spread nets upon the water, shall languish. Moreover, they that work and find flax, and they that weave networks shall be confounded, right? Because where there will be no work in Egypt, right? When uh, you have, you're going to have all these things coming to pass. They shall be broken in purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. The counsel of the wise counselors of Pharaoh is become brutish. How say ye unto Pharaoh? I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings. Right? Because the Masha Yahushai he said, he spoke about, right? A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. If Satan be divided against himself, he will not stand. Right? Which is coming in the form of the, uh, the image that Daniel saw. Right? Which is the, uh, uh, the clay mixed with iron right meaning the e eu and nato right they're going to be divided against amongst themselves right the allies of america babylon the great ultimately going to come up against it right to utterly burn it up they'll say it the holy bible right it says isaiah 19 and 12 where are they where are thy wise men? And let them tell thee now, and let them know what the Lord of hosts have purpose upon Egypt. The princes of Zoan have become fools, the princes of Naph were deceived, they have also seduced Egypt, even that they are the state of the tribes thereof. The Lord have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst of thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err and every work thereof. As a drunken man, 
staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail branch of rush may do. Right? In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and they shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which you shake it upon it. Starting with the Israelites waking up, prophesying the end. Right? They're, they're right? These other nations, right? Being mad, right? Because he, the Jews are, are, are black, the prophets are back. Right? They're, they're, they see that fearful consolation, right? Spoken of in the book of Second Edges, right? Which is the prophets waking up, right? The end being made manifest, and ultimately the ICBM missiles, right? So they see, right, that the Lord, his hand is upon America, Babylon, the great, right, to fulfill his word that he has spoke since the days of old, right? Isaiah 19 and, um, actually that's it for that. First Maccabees chapter 1 and 41, right? I'll make a, uh, have to make a, a part two, right? Lord willing, right? You ratified through Paris video, Bashem Yel Shai, Bashem Kakwadash, right? So he's talking about, right, things that happened back then, right? And the Greeks, the Romans, right? These are the same people, right? Same things that transpired, right? They're happening again. The Israelites prophesying is happening again. Right? Uh, which is why you read about, right, the uh, uh, certain of the Jews being kicked out of uh, Rome. I mean, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, let's see the scriptures. Let me get that real quick. Jews kicked out of, I think that was Italy. Mistaken. Right, so the Jews expelled from Rome, right? Let's see if we can find something. Right, the most obvious effect is that the persons who comp comprise the churches would have been substantially altered the gentiles who remained would have begun meeting together without, without jewish leadership and input and those they reached with the good news of christ during the intervening five years would have been gentiles when jewish christians begin returning five years later they would have encountered those churches composed of more gentiles and jews um again pretty interesting article but again the point is right they were expelled from Rome right because they were prophesying right just like you see right the so called black Hispanic and Native Americans right prophesying the words of Yahweh Bashem El Shai right condemning the wicked right um, like the scriptures say, right? Do not I hate thee with perfect hatred? Uh, with those, do not I hate them that hate thee with perfect hatred, right? I count them as my enemies, right? First Maccabees 1 and 41, right? So Antiochus and Epiphanes, right? Sleep creepy Joe, right? Moreover, King Antiochus, Antiochus rode unto his whole kingdom that all should be one people and every one should leave his laws so all the heathen agreed according to the commandments of the king 
The enemy also of the Israelites consented unto his religion, and sacrificed unto idols, and profaned the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by the messengers unto Jerusalem, and cities of the Judah, that they should follow the strange laws of the land, and forbid burnt offerings, and sacrifice drink offerings in the temple, and that they should profane the Sabbaths and festival days, and pollute the sanctuary and holy people, set up altars and groves and chapels of idols, and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts, that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanliness and profanation, to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances, whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said uh, he should die, right? And in the self same manner he wrote he to his old kingdom and appointed overseers over all people, commanded cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city, right? So we were, right, we were not, right, we were commanded to go away from the ordinances that our forefathers received, right? Keeping the law, keeping the high holy days, right? The Sabbaths, right? Circumcising the children, right? Just like you see in these latter days, right? The unrighteous decrees, right? Separating you, right? God's people, right? Ultimately, that's over the Lord, right? Two thirds of our people, right? They're gonna, they're gonna despise the words of Yahweh about Shemel Shai, the law, the and the commandments, right? The Lord God is gonna destroy them, right? Uh, Second Maccabees, um, Second Maccabees chapter uh, six and uh, verse six. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts, or to profess a, at all to be a Jew. Right? This this came to the form of Antiochus Epiphanes. Right? To the form of what? Wicked men of Israel. Right? Like it says in 1 Maccabees chapter 1. And um, uh, 41. Actually, what is it? Before chapter 41. Right? 1 Maccabees chapter 1 and verse 10. There came out of them a wicked root. Antiochus, surname Epiphanes. Son of Antiochus the king. Who had been in hostage at Rome, who had been in hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundredth and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of Greeks. Right, this is who, who was spoken about in Daniel chapter 8 and 23. Who once was, right, it will be done, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Right, these same people are back. Right, these same goddamn devils, right? Workers of iniquity, right? The councils, right, of the rulers of this world, right? Um First Maccabees 1 and 11 In those days went out of Israel wicked men Who persuaded many saying Let us go and make covenant with the heathen That are round about us For since we departed from them We had had much sorrow So this device pleased them well Right So then certain of the people were so forward therein That they went to the king To give them license to do After the ordinances of the heathen Right Let's talk about our people, right? These latter days, right? These so-called celebrities, these sellouts. You got sellouts in these in these camps, right? Because they're not telling you that say the Holy Bible. They're not telling you, they're not giving you the whole understanding. They're not giving you the hundred percent truth, right? Uh, uh, they say it, right? The law, right? They say it, the prophets, right? They say it, right? Uh, the Book of Revelations, right? All these things. That have been written, right, for our understanding. The Hebrew, the Greek, right? You have IUIC, right? They don't believe in going to the Hebrew, right? Why? Because they took a bag, right? ISUBK, right? They're mangling the breakdowns, right? Why? Because they took a bag, right? They're paid off, right? Sakari, right? 
bringing weapons to camp, right? That's not about, that's not what the Holy Bible says, right? They're not, they're not telling you about, right, the destruction coming, right? All these things, right, that scriptures speak about, right? Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 and uh, verse 1. So this is, right, the charge that we receive, right? The apostles, right? It's apostles and elders, starting with the elders and apostles, the great millstone, right? And we are fools uh, for Hamashiach's sake, right? We are not, right? Right? We have elders, yes. We have, right, the elders and apostles, the great millstone. We have, right, starting with elder apostle Harden on down, right? We have scribes. We have wise men, right? But, 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 right, we're just servants at the end of the day, right? We're just here, right, to give you, right, uh, this understanding, right, to condemn uh, the wicked, to, um, to not justify the wicked, right, and condemn, condemn the just, right? Like it says in, in the book of Proverbs, right? He who justifies the wicked and condemns the just, even they are an abomination to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Right? Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Hamashiach is at hand. Right? So, so what we're telling our people, right? Do not be shaken in mind. Do not be troubled, right? Because all these things have to come to pass. The division, the dissension, right? The trying of your faith, right? The 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 the, the awkward looks, right? The, the wicked, right? The wicked got to turn up, right? We got to turn up our faith, right? The 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 the, the looks of men. Right, the revilings, right, the railings, right, the accusations, right, these things have to be so, right. If you know the word of the Lord, then you know that these things are written of already, right, because the day of Amashia is, is at hand, right. The king, kingdom of Yahweh is, Yahweh is at hand, right. Repent and believe the gospel, right. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there, there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, which is uh, Esau, so-called white man, right? And the hand that he has upon these other nations, right? Right, to do wickedly, right? To do according to his works. Most high God is against you as well, Right? Who opposeth and exalt himself above all that is called God, that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, right? And the wicked is being revealed, right? Which is why these other nations are rising up. There's got to be division, right? There's got to be, be a falling away, right? Um... Remember ye not, when I was yet with you, I told you these things, right? And that's the spirit that the remnant are in, right? And that day you will know that a prophet is being amongst you, right? And this is what how we feel, right? Remember not, we were with you when we told you these things. Bashem Mashag Yahushai, right? And now you know that withholdeth, that he might be revealed in this time, right? So the Lord God is going to reveal... Right, this man in his time, right? Which is why the Apostle Paul, right? He had a great understanding. He was deep, right? He knew that the Lord God would reveal this goddamn devil in his time, right? Second Maccabees chapter 2 and uh, verse 2. This is my last precept. And uh, go ahead and do a part 2, right? Lord willing, the power spirit of Yahweh right? Bashim Kakwadash, right?
and uh, 2 Maccabees 2 and 2, and how that prophet, prophet having given them the law, charged them not to forget the commandments of, of the Lord, and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. With other such, such speeches exhorted he them that the law should not depart from their hearts. Right? So he's talking about the prophet Jeremiah. Right? <clears throat> and, uh, right, this is what we're doing today. Right? Through, through uh, uh, like it says in the book of Hosea, through similitudes. Right? Multiplying visions. Right? Through the ministry of the prophets. Right? We're exhorting our people. Right? That the law should not depart from their hearts. Through other such speeches, right? So you will not err in your mind. Don't be dismayed at the works of the heathen, right? Um, Second Maccabees two and four was also contained in the same writing. But the prophet, being warned of God, commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with him, as he went forth into the mountain, where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of God, right? So, so Moses did not climb up anything. Scriptures say he ascended up, right? This is why you can't rely, you can't rely on no goddamn Septuagint. You got to go into the Hebrew, right? Second Maccabees two and five, and when Jeremiah came thither, he found a hollow cave wherein he laid the tabernacle, and the ark, and the altar of incense, and so stopped the door. Some of those that followed him came to mark the way, but they could not find it. Which, when Jeremiah perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that God shall gather his people again together and receive them unto mercy. Then the Lord shall shew them these things, and the glory of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, shall appear, and the cloud also, as it was showed under Moses. Right? So that what's going to appear? Chariots, man. Isaiah chapter 66, the Lord will come with vengeance and, and with his chariots of flaming fire, right? Were we not with you when we told you these things, right? And as when Solomon desired the place might be honorably sanctified, right? So Solomon, right, he saw the vision right, of the Lord Almighty, right, whether it was chariots or not, right, it doesn't say that in, in, in his personal account, right, but we see that, right, throughout the whole volume of the book, right, the chariots appearing, uh, uh, the prophets entering in, into the cloud, the prophet Moses ascending into the pillar of fire, into the, uh, into the cloud, seeing the glory of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, Hamashik Yahushai ascending, and the same way he will he speaking uh, uh, the angels speaking about how he will return in that same like manner. Bashim Masha Gelshai, right? So with that, right, it's brother Yatazadot, hero of Israel, right? Lord willing I make a part two, right? This is uh touching on right um the chariots of Yah Bashim El Shai. Right, written in the volume of the book, right, and right, reincarnation being scriptural and diverse, doc diverse doctrines, Salakia, through the power of Sveti Abashim Yahushai, Abashim Kakwadash, double honor to the elders and apostles, Great Millstone, Kwame Asharala, Abad Babal, Shalom.